Okay. When it comes to A Course in Miracles, we are all looking for the simple formula. We want the course wrapped up in a really small package with a nice little bow around it. We want that single core idea that's easy to remember. And we want to be able to explain it to friends and family before their eyes start to glaze over. Our minds love things in small packages, spiritual things included. There is the 12 steps, there is the four questions, there is the four agreements. And it's easy to see why we want this simplicity with the course. The course, let's face it, is long and complex and hard to understand. We did a survey recently, I'm sure many of you took part in it, and, and one of the questions was, what obstacles made you hesitant to get involved with the course? And far and away, the two biggest responses were length and, complex, and complexity of ACIM and difficulty understanding the material. So with the course, we're all looking for the simple and ultra clear explanation. And you see this in the books that are available. There's A Course in Miracles Made Easy, A Course in Miracles Clarified, A Quick and Easy Guide, A Course in Miracles in Five Minutes, A Course in Miracles for Dummies. And the need for this is not just conceptual, it's also practical. And in fact, that's part of the meaning of the word formula. Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines formula as a conventionalized statement intended to express some fundamental truth or principle, especially as a basis for negotiation or action. So you have some set unchanging statement that expresses a fundamental truth and that's used then as the basis for action. If we had that simple formula, with the course, we could carry it with us at all times. We could put it into action in all our situations. It would be like a little tote bag that, was, that has what we needed and that we always carried around with us. As it is, we feel like the course gives us so much baggage I, conceptually that we need about 12 bellhops with overloaded luggage carts. Now I realize that in classes here at the circle, you get a raft of new ideas every time you come to a class or gathering. And we love that, I love that. But there is actually good news on this level and you know it, it's very good news. The course explicitly provides us with a simple formula that captures the very heart of this path. This simple formula is one sentence, which is what we want, right? And it's something that as we will see, we can indeed carry around with us and apply it to everything. We can put it in action. Is found in lesson 297, forgiveness is the only gift I give. Now that lesson's only two paragraphs, but here is how its main paragraph reads. And we have it on the screen there. I've laid it out in ionic pentameter because I like this lesson in particular laid out that way. All of the, the lines fall really neatly. So here is how it goes. Forgiveness is the only gift I give because it is the only gift I want and everything I give, I give myself. This is salvation's simple formula. And I who would be saved would make it mine to be the way I live within a world that needs salvation and that will be saved as I accept atonement for myself. And that means presumably I accept atonement through the act of forgiving. He calls it, you can leave it on for now. He calls it salvation's simple formula. And he says that I would make it mine 
make it my formula to be the way I live. And the simple formula, of course, is just those first three lines, which is the first sentence. Forgiveness is the only gift I give because it is the only gift I want and everything I give, I give myself. One sentence, three lines of iambic pentameter, and that's the formula. This, I mean, you can take it down now, Emily. This is one of my absolute favorite parts of the course. Even though it's one sentence, I think of it as three lines because you can lay it out that way. Um, also, if you apply those lines to a particular person, they turn into a powerful exercise. Um, I've used them in that way countless times. And every time I do so, it brings to mind new perceptions and brings up feelings that I didn't realize were there. And you'll see that. Even though this formula is truly simple, it's full of surprises, full of ideas that profoundly change our view of the world and of relationships. This formula looks at life differently than we do. So I wanna break it down, talk about each line and about how they fit together, and then talk about making it our way of life, the way we live. And then at the very end, we'll do an exercise based on it. All right. So the first line is forgiveness is the only gift I give. Forgiveness is the only gift I give. These days, we know that forgiveness is for you, right? We hear that all the time. Forgiveness is a gift you give to yourself. Resentment is like poison you take hoping your enemies will die. We've heard that. Forgiveness has nothing to do with the other person. It's all about you. So I typed the following sentence into Google. Can you take that down for a sec? Um, <laughs> I typed the following sentence into Google. Forgiveness is for yourself and has nothing to do with the other person looking for websites. And Google gave me this AI overview, which is pretty interesting. And it says, this statement is generally considered accurate. Forgiveness is for yourself and has nothing to do with the other person. This statement is generally considered accurate. Forgiveness is primarily an act you perform for yourself to release the burden of negative emotions tied to a past event, rather than an act directed at the other person who caused the hurt. Now, as I was looking through the different websites that came up, and they were all echoing this idea, I found a single lonely blogger named James Anthony Ellis who is sick of this trend. He says, perhaps weary of old fashioned notions that had us believing we were giving a gift to others by forgiving or pardoning them, humans all over Cyberland have pendulum swung their brains to the far corners of its intelligence to proclaim loudly, and you can put that slide back up, We forgive only for ourselves and not the other person. And then I love how it's attributed to the internet <laughs> as if the internet is unanimous on this point. Okay. So the first line of the formula clearly has a different concept. And that is that forgiveness is a gift. It's something we give to another, it's intended to benefit them. How is forgiveness a gift? I don't think it's very hard to understand this. I think that's how we've traditionally understood it for a few thousand years before we got all you know, cutting edge with our spirituality. We all feel, just to think about ourselves, we all fe feel people in our lives holding things against us you know they're doing it. And as defensive as we might get about that, we surely carry some of our own guilt over what we did. And we want to be set free. We want to be let off the hook. Now I'm talking about us, how we feel, 
but surely the people in our lives want the same thing. They want to be let off the hook. And that saying, let off the hook, captures it. I didn't know this, but apparently it comes from fishing, right? Where you're reeling a fish in, it's about to be caught and to become dinner, but you, the fisherman, can let it off the hook so that it's free, okay? And without this language, we see this very same concept in the Course. So look at this passage. It says, join him in gladness and remove all trace of guilt from his disturbed and tortured mind. Help him to lift the heavy burden of sin you laid upon him and he accepted as his own and toss it lightly and with happy laughter away from him. And you can leave that up for just a bit here. So you've laid a heavy burden of sin on the other person and he accepted it as his own. That's what happens in our relationships, is it not? I lay something on you and you accept it. And now you carry the weight of it. And it can happen entirely silently. I can lay this burden on you at times without a word being said, and you can then silently accept it as your own, perhaps without even knowing it. And now this heavy burden of sin <clears throat> becomes guilt that, as the first sentence says, makes your mind disturbed and tortured. But I have the option to lift this heavy burden from your mind and toss it lightly and with happy laughter away from you. That's what forgiveness does. We are lifting from another the burden of guilt we laid on them and they accept it as their own. That's an enormous gift to them. Forgiveness then is indeed a gift we give to another. Okay. But the first line says a little more than that. It says forgiveness is the only gift I give. How can it be the only gift I give? Isn't it a gift out of a great many gifts that I can potentially give? There's a passage from the psychotherapy supplement that really, I think, answers this for us. It says, awake and be glad for all your sins have been forgiven you. And then it says, this is the only message that any two should ever give each other. This is the only message that any two should ever give each other. Now that first line is a reference to the gospels. It's about from a healing story in the gospels. Um, but we can understand it in a course context by just seeing the word sins in quotation marks, right? So they aren't real sins, they're seeming sins. Now to say that this is the only message obviously doesn't mean you just say those same words over and over again, no matter what anybody says. So if someone says to you, what do you want for dinner? You just say, awake and be glad. Like that would be ridiculous. It means that whatever words you are saying, the essence of your message is be glad. Your past mistakes are gone. You are still shining with holiness. I don't think that's so hard to imagine doing. For instance, you can imagine you're giving someone a cup of coffee or a glass of water. And while you're doing that, picture yourself giving it to them with the message in your mind, awake and be glad for all your sins have been forgiven you. I think you can picture that. And I think you'd give them that cuppy, cup of coffee or glass of water with a slightly different kind of demeanor or attitude. They'd receive it differently. Now imagine that every single thing you do and every thing, single thing you say 
is just like that. All of it conveys the message, awake and be glad for all your sins have been forgiven you. So now every little gesture of yours lets a small chunk of that heavy burden of guilt slide off their shoulders. And if that's what you were doing, then indeed forgiveness would be the only gift you give. Let's go on to the next line. Because it is the only gift I want. Because it is the only gift I want. So the first line said, forgiveness is the only gift I give. And this second line presents a subtle contrast. Now, instead of it being the only gift I give, it's the only gift I want. And that clearly means it's the only gift I want to receive. The only gift I want someone else to give to me. That's a pretty big claim. And is it true? Is forgiveness really the only gift we want to receive? I was thinking about like, if we made a list of all the things we want, what would it be? And what things would be near the top of the list? And so I thought, okay, I'll ask chat GPT, what are the top 10 things most people want? And here's what it said. It's not a very surprising list, it's pretty interesting. We have the top, of course, health and well being, financial stability, love and relationships, happiness and contentment. And then, you know, you can see the list. Um, towards the end, we get freedom and autonomy. Those are big ones, adventure and novelty. But all the things on this list are not a big surprise. And clearly, nowhere on the list including in the description of each item, which I snipped out, you know, there's a sentence or two description for each one. Nowhere in the headings or in the descriptions is there mention of wanting to be forgiven. So here we have another surprise and you can, you can take it off. In this formula, would being forgiven be a bigger need than we realize? Let's consider this. Think about a long-term relationship you are in and say in your mind, forgiveness is the only thing I really want in this relationship. I want to be forgiven by this person. I have a deep need to be forgiven by this person. What comes to your mind when you say that? When I say it, and I've used these lines so many times, I invariably realize that I have secretly wanted to be forgiven by this person. I've said and done things I regret. I've been neglectful. I've overlooked their needs or, or trampled on them. I've carried attitudes and perceptions toward them that are far from loving. And as a result, they are holding things against me. Traits of mine, things I've done, things I said a long time ago and may have forgotten. And as a result, the situation is exactly like that passage we saw earlier. They have laid a heavy burden of guilt on me for understandable reasons, and I absolutely accepted it as my own. I'm normally unaware of this. I don't think about it in relationships, except occasionally. But once I say this line, I realize the burden is always there in some hidden place in my mind. And in that place, I really want to be let off the hook. In that place, I'm dreaming of them lifting that heavy burden and tossing it away lightly and with happy laughter. I want them to say with words, with actions, somehow 
I want to hear from them, you know what? It's okay. The past is gone. Your slate is clean. I just love you. And I don't see anything that stands in the way of my love for you. If you receive that message in the relationship that you just thought of, wouldn't you breathe a deep sigh of relief? Wouldn't you stand a little taller? Wouldn't you feel healed? But before we get too lost in, in these good feelings, there's an obvious problem, and you're very likely thinking of it. What are the chances of them saying that? What are the chances that tomorrow they're just going to let you off the hook? Probably not great. And that leads us to the third line. And everything I give, I give myself. And everything I give, I give myself. This is the answer to wanting that gift of forgiveness, but feeling like you'll never receive it. According to this line, you can receive it now. You don't have to wait. For if you truly give it, you are simultaneously giving it to yourself as well. That's great news. It would be so good to not have to wait for that message. But how does it work? What's the mechanics of, of receiving forgiveness just from you giving it? So think about that burden of guilt we talked about earlier. What was the essence of that? The essence of it was that you have seen unloving, hurtful, inconsiderate, callous, harsh, even cruel things come out of you toward this person. And you've seen their hurt as a result. And from all of that, somewhere inside, maybe it's buried, maybe it's closer to the surface, you feel, I'm not a very good person. I hurt the people I love. What's wrong with me? Have you caught yourself asking, what's wrong with me? So now imagine that instead you see this beautiful, gesture of forgiveness come out of you to release the one you love, to set them free. Imagine you tell them with your words, your actions, your face, that their slate is clean, their past is gone, that you see nothing, not even a dust moat that stands in the way of your love for them. If you saw that pure gesture come out of you and you saw it bless them and free them, wouldn't you feel great about yourself? For that would overturn that sour feeling within you that says, what's wrong with me? You instead would see something deeply right with you. It would restore your faith in yourself. Where you saw darkness in you, you would now see light because of the beauty of the loving gift you gave, the gift of forgiveness. I think we've all had these moments where we said or did something really loving and truly egoless. And when those moments come, you feel so good about yourself. You may not be conscious of it, but you feel your past mistakes drop away. Suddenly you feel clean. You could say you feel forgiven. The gift you gave was given to yourself. So that is how it is the case that everything I give, I give myself. But there's one last piece to this. For such moments 
when something like that comes out of us, they're generally shared. Okay, the other person generally responds in kind to some degree. So not only are you feeling good about yourself, but the other person is feeling good about you as well. They are seeing the light in you, which means they are lifting that burden of darkness they laid on you. They're giving you the very gift you thought you had to wait for indefinitely. They're forgiving you. So you receive it not only through a psychological process, but from them as well. And this is the final surprise you could say embedded in this formula. For of course, our ego is constantly telling us not to forgive because it means loss. It means giving away something you want. Our ego says, don't give away that IOU. You're going to want to call that in. You're going to want to hold that over their head. Don't let that fish off the hook. You'll come away empty handed. Yet, of course, we know from experience, the opposite is true. By giving it, you receive it. Giving is an act of true self-interest. So now we have the ability, I, I hope, to understand the whole formula, which again says, Forgiveness is the only gift I give because it is the only gift I want and everything I give, I give myself. Forgiveness is the only gift I give, meaning it's a real gift. It's for them. But I'm motivated to give it by the knowledge that I will simultaneously give, be giving it to me. And in the end, it's the only gift I really want to receive. At the beginning, we saw that this is salvation's simple formula, and it really is everything we want from a formula. It's simple, it's memorable, and it's practical. It is indeed, as the dictionary said, a conventionalized statement that expresses a fundamental truth as the basis for action. It really is that small tote bag we can carry with us everywhere so that we have it ready for every need. We could make every interaction an expression of this formula. Normally we go into an interaction and we're wanting something, right? What if we turn that around and told ourselves this is not about getting something from you. This is about setting you free from your past. This is about lifting from you that burden I laid on you and you accepted as your own. So imagine that with each and everything you said, you were really saying, awake and be glad for all your sins have been forgiven you. I'm sure many of you have seen the movie Princess Bride. And you, if you have, you probably remember where Buttercup realizes that whenever farm boy says, as you wish, he was really saying, I love you. So imagine that whenever you said anything, you were really saying, you're forgiven. Awake and be glad. If you were to carry this simple formula with you everywhere, using it all the time, what would happen is exactly what the lesson says. It says, this is salvation's simple formula, and I, who would be saved, would make it mine, my formula, to be the way I live, my way of life. So we have the simple formula we wanted from the course. It's there. Now let's make it our formula, the rule we follow in everything. Let's make it our way of life. And if this becomes our way of life, we'll be giving forgiveness in every situation, in every interaction. And because everything I give, I give myself, 
we'll be constantly receiving it too. Always sending it out and always drinking it in. We will be continually setting ourselves free, putting all our own mistakes behind us, continually receiving the only gift we want. Thank you.